you're pregnant, you there is nausea, you don't feel like eating a lot, then maybe there's this now this specific food, maybe you know, papa nakara, for example, you know, that you want to eat, but then it's also not available. Hi, my name is Folashade Daini. I am Nigerian, but I currently live in Ottawa, Canada. And um, I have a two-year-old, and then I'm currently pregnant with my second baby. <laughs> so we moved to Canada December 13, 2022. Yeah, it was when we landed, myself, my daughter, and my husband. I had my firstborn in Nigeria, October 2021. Uh, the, the difference is a lot, right? And I didn't even know. So you know when you know they talk about like raising children, I anticipated that and when we moved, you know, like raising a child that is already here, like a toddler, you know, I knew that I was going to be doing a lot of other things. So even before like we left Nigeria, I started mentally preparing myself to be the sole rest, um, the only one responsible because back home, my sister was around. I had my sister in law come over too and then I also had help in the house. But so in my head, but what I didn't prepare for was getting pregnant again and having to go through um, so for my first pregnancy, I had hyperemesis gravidarum. It's a situation where, it's a condition where you're pregnant and you know, you can barely keep anything down, like severe nausea and vomiting, like showing up like up to five to six times, you know, in a day and not just morning, you know. So I wasn't prepared for that, you know, for doing that alone. And I would say like that, that has been like the major difference. So I remember when I was in Nigeria, when I was pregnant with my first child, I had the same hyperemesis. You know, and because I couldn't even enter the kitchen at all, it was my husband and my sister, you know, that were taking turns, you know, cooking for me. And she moved over, she came to stay with us for like three months, you know, and they were the ones doing the cooking. But being here in Canada, you know, was just what my husband could do. And like, bear in mind that he also has like a job. Now we have a toddler, you know, that we have to cater for. So just navigating, you know, hyper messes and all that, like morning sickness in the early part of pregnancy, and even, I mean, because and because it was hyperemesis, it didn't just go away after first trimester. Even up until like two days ago, I think I still threw up, you know, in, um, in the morning. Yeah, so just, you know, that difference. And I remember there were times when I would, I would like feel bad because you're pregnant, you, there is nausea, you don't feel like eating a lot. Then maybe there's this, now this specific food, maybe, you know, papa nakara, for example, you know, that you want to eat, but then it's also not available. So I would say like that difference, that support that I had all through my pregnancy where I remember there was even a time my auntie, you know, my husband's aunt and my aunt, different times where they would, they would just cook from their house because they knew I could not smell the food and then they would bring and stock up our freezer. But I didn't have that in this pregnancy. So uh, it, the way it is like the pros and cons, we know why we moved here. I mean, having this baby here, we know like the benefits that it gives, healthcare, I remember being in labor with my first child and I remember I was in so much pain because I mean I was to deliver vaginally and I remember asking them for an epidural and they told me oh, I should have asked them before. I mean, it was my first child, I was like, supposed to know the pain was going to be so much, you know, and I remember talking to my OB here and she was like, oh, don't worry, you're in Canada, you know, if you need an epidural on the spot, we'll be there to provide it. So there is that advantage of having healthcare, you know, there is a citizenship as well. So, like, I wouldn't say, like, it's necessarily better, but I think the experience would have been better. One thing, like, that was made a major difference because of my aversion to food was access to food. I can easily eat. So if there was one thing I could have brought, you know, from that Nigerian experience here would be ability to order the food, you know. And it's not like you can't even order food in Canada. It's not, you know, but you just can't do it all the time. So maybe if someone had sent me some money to say, oh, for your cravings, you know, I would have felt like, oh, it was a kind of way to merge both benefits from Nigeria and Canada. Oh, so my mother-in-law actually, um, that woman is superstar. Oh my goodness. Um, so I remember, I think it was when I was, was it when I was like during this pregnancy? And I remember telling like I was craving something, or maybe I didn't even tell her, but I just got like a transfer, you know, from her and just saying like, oh, to use it, like it was a gift. And it just really meant a lot because she's back home, like she's in Nigeria. And it was, the gift was very, like, it was very helpful. Uh, my friends, my friends back home that are also moms that we started together, you know, some of us are also like in this phase together, you know, having like our second babies. And now like all we get is, oh, they just send pictures, you know, we just follow up with each other through pictures. But because most of us had our first babies at the same time, and now, you know, we are pregnant together again. So I've just been nice to have that community and that support here. But 
I mean, but the good part is that we are also making friends here. I'm also making friends here. You know, we're also like in the same phase. And I'm glad like I get to celebrate with them, even here in Canada.